Indeed. Okay, hi, welcome everybody. And yes, the time has come to get our awesome friend back, Gavin, who is going to be doing some Q and A as well. So, if you're in the chat, you're watching it live. Yes, we will endeavour to smash out some of those questions that you guys have got for us. Now, already we've got um, a few people in here, and it's pretty cool. And if you're watching on the replay, I really appreciate your comments about all of the things that we're talking about here tonight so what we're going to do now um i think we uh we better get our friend in and there he is a picture of a tree nice one gav <laughs> there he Sorry. is all good so can um people in the chat tell us if you can hear me and if you want to say something quick gav if you can hear hello gav everyone so that'd be cool once we get like the okay from everyone because i'm using um my outdoor mics indoors why not <laughs> i've done some tests today on all of the uh, mics so um yes yes it sounds like um it's all good in the hood <coughs> what does number one mean i don't know why i see that in chats when you ask is the audio and visual good and it's just number one why can't i just say yes <laughs> maybe i'm old school i don't understand all this new found stuff Five by five. Apparently, that means it's good as well. It's like CB talk back in the day. Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you very much indeed for some um, common sense and straight talk from Pagan Spirit. You're absolutely welcome. And, yep, yeah, everything's good. Volume is balanced. That's good because the problem with this mic, it is always coming out on the left or the right. So that's good if everyone's got um, all of that coming through. All sweet. 136 people in the chat. So, yeah, I do realise that it's not a Friday night, and I do realise not as many people would be <coughs> here. So we're going to um, wait and see. So what I thought I'd do first is just show um, you guys basically what the government is showing us. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop over to the share screen now, and we are going to look at this. Now, what we are seeing here is straight off the government website. You're more than welcome to do this. So bailiff powers, when they visit your home. So this is one of the topics we are going to be um, talking about this evening. And it's quite interesting, really, because it doesn't seem um, that bailiffs are that scary at all, according to this website. So some of you um, guys watching who have had um, incidences with um, bailiffs or uh, debt recovery agents, if you could call them. Um, approved enforcement agents. There you go. Civilian enforcement officers. Wow. Now, look at this. This is quite interesting because I've only just noticed this. Look at this. Bailiffs who enforce magistrates, court fines, warrants, arrest, either civilian enforcement officers. Wow. Now, I am under the impression, in fact, I actually know a civil enforcement officer, um, formerly a traffic warden. So I did hear a long time ago that some um, civil enforcement officers have pace cards, which basically means they can enter your property without any document, which could be quite scary. Um, let me know what you think in the um, comments underneath the video. So look at this. Pay what you owe before bailiff visits. Of course, that's what they want. Now, look at this. Dealing with bailiffs. You do not have to open your door to a bailiff or let them in. So there you go. Just don't open the door. That's the first thing you can do. Bailiffs cannot enter your home by force, for example, by pushing past you. Now, I have seen quite a few videos on YouTube about this in the past, and I have actually seen this happen when they just hold up a bit of paper and literally just barge their way in. So that doesn't very well sit with me, to be frank. Um, if you're, if only children under 16 or vulnerable people with disabilities, for example, are present. So basically, if you've got um, a child under the age of 16 in the property, they're not really allowed in. Between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning, um, through anything, except the door. <laughs> My God, they try come through windows. It's insane. So yes, basically, like I said, you're more than welcome to go through um, the government's um, definition of what 
bailiffs can and can't do. So what we would thought we'd do is we'd just gloss over this real quick before we start um, getting stuck in. It gives people enough time to indeed enter the chat as well. So look at this. Check the bailiff's ID. Before you let a bailiff in, take your things or pay for them, ask to see proof of their identity, such as a badge, ID card, or enforcement agent certificate. Which company they're from, a telephone contact number, a detailed breakdown of the amount owed. You can ask for proof of a bailiff's identity and authorization even if they visited before. For example, ask them to put it through the letterbox or show it through at the window. Wow, I don't think any of them are going to be putting their ID for the letterbox. Um, if they did, they're probably new to the job. So, yes, this could just go on and on and on. So, without further ado, what we're going to do now is we are going to speak to our wonderful friend Gavin, who has um, been looking into this sort of thing. So, we will be doing some Q&As later. So, if you want to um, take over for a bit, mate, and just let them, the guys and girls know out there about all of this sort of stuff. No problem. Hello, everyone, again. Um, I'm just trying to work out how I share my screen so I can show you something. Um, right. Bear with me just a second. That's um, right. We've done it last time. It worked like a charm, which was good. So yeah. All you've got to do is remember. Work. <laughs> good luck exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Chrome tab, Chrome window. I'm trying to find my presentation, but <laughs> let's just do the screen itself. So, main. I mean, this might actually be, guys, one of the quickest lives we've ever done because the simple fact is, I mean, we want to be clear, we're talking about enforcement agents, not these high court bailiffs. So, you know, if these are bailiffs that have gone got high court writs, etc., we're not discussing that. We're talking about what 99% of us deal with on a generally on a daily basis when you are um, pushing back against the system. So the bottom line with these enforcement agents is they have no power, zero. So the mm. single best way to actually engage with them is to not engage with them, right? So if they're banging on your front door, you don't answer. And so long as you don't answer and you don't engage and you don't give your name or anything like that, there's literally nothing they can do. So my advice to most people that we speak to, unless they actually want to actively get into a, you know, a, a fight with them, if you like, and a claim is just don't do anything, ignore them. And eventually mm -hmm. they go away. Um, so it's basically the, the non-compliance route again, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it's, it's peaceful non-compliance because it's this system being commerce and contract and everything else. It it relies yeah. on them initially. This is why they always ask who you are. Are you X? And in our naivety and often ignorance, we confirm that and we get into this sort of ruckus and backwards and forth, you know, back and forth mm -hmm. with them. But the bottom line is, if you haven't confirmed who you are, then how can they do anything? Yeah. And it's like and, it's like unwittingly entering into a contract for that time, isn't it? By responding in some way. So the right to remain silent is a very powerful thing. And I think a lot of people um, melt that away because they just get intimidated and they just go, OK, whatever. Yes, that's me. And then it's too late. Then if you just stick by your guns and you say nothing at all. That's exactly it. Guns. And as we're doing this, guys, I don't know why, but it's not allowing me to. Um share as is always the way let me just try this one more time otherwise this is going to be a bit of a painful um right entire screen mm -hmm. click that share it says i've got to reset my chrome so i'm we're gonna to have to try and do this sorry guys i'm gonna to have to try and do this a, a a different way now what i'll what i'll actually do is I'm mm. going to walk you through the facts. Yeah. Um, if anybody wants this information, I'll email it. So like before, please reach out and I'll send you this stuff through. So you'll have it in black and white. But unfortunately, didn't think this would happen. Um, it's telling me I've got to reset my Chrome. So obviously, we don't want to be letting everybody wait. So what I'm going to do is just kind of walk through the very basics of the situation with these enforcement agents, because it always comes down to a right of claim. And the simple fact is they don't have a right of claim, the end. So if you know the facts behind that and, and what to ask, right, mm -hmm. you can start basically, um, you can file a claim yourself. You can actually go on the attack. And as with the uh, the council tax video, we love these SARS, very powerful tool, Data Protection Act 2018. And that's actually a really great way to start um, pre-action post-call for, for a claim. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through 
some of those basics now. Now, if anyone's on this chat right now um, and has had any interaction with these enforcement agents, you'll probably know that they like to um, scaremonger quite a lot and instill fear. And one of the things they'll say is that, you know, we've got a warrant of control and I can come and get to take control of your goods, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you can go down rabbit holes with regards to the, 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 you know, the meaning of the word goods, et cetera. But again, I want to keep this really simple. Now, mm. the fact is they don't have a warrant of control. They can never get a warrant of control and it's completely illegitimate. So what I want to share with you is some facts as to what they commonly say. So when they say it to you, you know that that's just meaningless. And I'm also then going to share what it is they would need to be adhering to for them to actually have a real warrant of control that could then be legally served upon you. OK, so this is just again, this is more generic, but they'll generally say stuff to the effect of a warrant of control being issued by whatever council or authority it is they're dealing with. And they normally sort of cite the traffic enforcement centre for some reason. I don't know why. Or some mm. other type of county court. By the way, the traffic enforcement centre is not a court. It's just a bulk processing admin centre. You don't get judges or anyone sitting there. So it's very easy to um, pick that apart, which I'll come into in a second. But the point is, they'll actually claim that they're doing this on the authority of the council. And that's where they've got the, um, the warrant of control from. And then they'll cite things like Schedule 12 of the Tribunal Courts and Enforcement Act 2017 and Taking Control of Goods Regulations 2013 which is all well and good. And if you looked into that legislation, you'd be thinking, wow, you know, they can definitely do what they're saying they can do with this warrant of control. But the thing that they neglect to talk about is the fact of how this warrant was actually issued. And the truth is that there is no council in this country, no organisation that isn't the judiciary that has the power to issue a warrant. Now, if we brought this into the council, because a lot of us deal with the enforcement agents with the councils, and probably a lot of you good folks are too, if a council was to issue that warrant, it basically means that that council's acting as the judiciary. And that would Illegal. basically, illegally, they'd be bringing them into breach of another piece of legislation we like to use, which is Section 78 of the Local Government Act 1888. These older uh, statutes and um, you know legislation are definitely, uh, definitely good and work for us because the newer stuff tends to forget the old stuff. Now, the simple fact is that section just confirms, and I'm paraphrasing, um, it's obviously an offence and a criminal offence for a council or any anyone working in that council to be impersonating the justice. So think about that also when you're talking about liability orders. I know this is not that conversation, but that's relevant to that too. Yeah, yeah. Wow. The other thing is, and we've confirmed this again with um, the MOJ uh, with freedom of information requests, and we're still doing it. There's no court in the land that has the authority to grant another authority to have judicial authority to issue a warrant or any other type of order. Mm. So the bottom line with all of this is that these warrants of control are just fake, like these yeah. liability orders. Third, right? par third parties need not apply sort of thing. Correct. Yeah. So now you can play this. And if you know this stuff in detail, it's you can have a lot of fun with these agents because they start off with their, you know, their threats and their bluster and they might text you or something. But when you start coming back with the facts, they back off. Now, we've actually had enforcement agents completely give up on the basis of what I've just explained to you and what I'm now going to share next. Because the fact is, if an enforcement agent were to attend your property with that document claiming it to be a warrant of control, and you know what we've just expressed to you as being the truth, then they're actually in breach of quite a lot of different legislation. But one of the good ones to get them on is forgery, the Forgery and Counterfeiting Act, which is 1981. Now, what you can actually do from that is then go yeah. and file a complaint with the serious fraud department. Now, let's be honest, they aren't going to take that seriously or do anything with it. But it's mm. the fact that you've threatened it and the fact that you're going to do it and have that on a record of some sort, that's mm. meaningful. And if you're going to actually go forward with a claim, um, then that's that's no, that's evidence, basically. That's your exhibit A, if you like. As, as well, yeah, because you're going to be putting on your time, say 80 or £100 pound an hour, except for whatever it is, and everything... And if it continues, you can really use that. And um, I don't know whether it's going to be too much for a small claims court or whatever, but that could certainly ramp up, couldn't it, the longer this BS continues if you go down that road. And and this is the thing, guys, because it's time, it's energy. And if you haven't done this stuff before, there's a lot of time into research and everything else. So this is why I kind of fall back onto the default. Just don't do anything. Like, ignore them. Don't give it your energy. There's nothing more to do about it. But Life's too short, bro, isn't it? 
that's it, man. There's, there's so much else going on, and we know there's a lot of stuff playing out right now. You know, why do we want to go head to head with these people? That said, if you did want to do it, one of the easiest ways to do it is with a DSAR and then asking the questions. And I'm going to show you some of these questions in a second that you know they can't comply with. And that then gives you um, or puts them into breach of a section of the Data Protection Act, which I'll go into in a second, which allows you to sue them for damages, for distress yeah. and everything else. Right. So it's one of the easiest ways to do it. Now, if you have got them kind of ignoring you and escalating, that's what we always do, because ultimately, it's like I said in the last one, if you start costing them more than it's costing them to go after you, they will go away. There's yeah. no this commercially. It doesn't make any sense for them to carry on. Not right? viable, is it? Absolutely. Now, what I want to go through are the seven key points that a warrant of control has to contain for it again to be a legitimate and legally served warrant of control. Now, I'm, I'm focusing on the warrant of control because that's their main tool. That's the thing they're saying, right, this is what we've got and this is why we're coming to take all this property. Mm. So, a warrant so would, of that, control, would that be like a, a piece of paper? They come to your house and they'd show you this piece of paper. It's going to have all sorts of like, text and the graphics on it, possibly. And it's going to have somewhere, or they even mentioned as well, warrant of control. Is that right? Yeah, you probably there's different variations of it but it's normally just a, a document and read across the top like the middle of it somewhere warrant of control and warning <laughs> i mean it, yeah that is it's so ridiculous because how can that ever be a court issued document right but that's what they use there's no so, court still on it for a start is there it's it's just absolutely fake i mean it's completely rubbish yeah um so now that that document itself has basically got to contain seven key things and the first of which is going to be your name and address sorry not the name and address of them who obtained the warrant now here's the other thing and i'll come into this in a bit more detail they would have no authority to go and get that warrant because it's got nothing to do with them they have no right of claim so if it's a council issue as an example what you i'm going ahead a bit but i want to come back but what you've yeah. got is one organization and another organization which is the enforcement agency well, what has this got to do with them? The, the, yeah. the alleged debts with this organisation. So how the hell have they now got this alleged debt and got then the authority to go and obtain warrants? Do you know what? They're probably going to use the term acting on their behalf. And acting is a key word because they are just acting, aren't they? Absolutely. And again, it's another irrelevance. And I'll explain that in a bit more detail in just a second. So this warrant, name and address of the, whoever obtained the warrant, name and address of you, who's obviously being served, has to include the amount of debt owed, including any interest and fees, of course, the court that issued the warrant and the date of which it was issued, the name and address of the enforcement agent who's going to carry out the enforcement of the warrant. Then you've got to have a statement of the debtor's rights, including the right to appeal against the warrant. So this is the other thing. If you've had no notification of that warrant ever being a thing in the first place, then it can't be served because you have the right to appeal it. Anything mm. that's being done against us, any type of claim, we've got a right to appeal and defend. So if that hasn't occurred, then again, it cannot be a legally served warrant, even if they did obtain it correctly. Mm. Um, and then you've got to have the details of the goods that have been exempted from seizure. Seizure, sorry. So, you know, tools and things like that can't be taken, but it's got to be in that warrant. Now, anyone that's seen anything that you've got from an enforcement agent, you'll know that is nothing. there's nothing close to that being included in that warrant. So that hopefully establishes that these warrants of control are BS and that these enforcement agents essentially don't have any power unless you give it to them. And that's the key thing. And that's why they go with these fear and intimidation tactics, because a lot of this system just works that way. And we just give in and we capitulate and we allow it to happen to us. OK, so this is about peaceful non-consent, as, as you said, Darren. So here's the next thing. So we've established that, but here's, the, here's where they really fail. And this is how you would actually go ahead with a claim, because this is about debt, right? If it's the council tax, they're, they're pursuing you for an alleged debt. If it's a PCN fine that's become something, it's an alleged debt. It's always debt. It's a commercial system, right? So on the basis that it's debt, well, then how does one organization, let's just call it the council. I'm trying to get my hands in the, in the picture here. Right? That, that's the council. That's one organization. And then you've got the enforcement agency. Right? So here's the council. That's what you got by the balls there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, you've got one company, another company. Right. But the enforcement agency is a company that we can find on company's house, whoever they are. Now, Correct. I can set up a company on company's house. It's no different. It's a company. 
right? Call it whatever you, you like, can't you? Call yeah. it whatever you like. So the question we've got to ask is, if the council, so this, the, the camera's opposite, so I'm going the wrong way. If the council <laughs> has the debt, how does this company now have the debt? And then how do they have a right of claim against you? Now, debt claims is quite a deep rabbit hole to go down. So I'm going to keep this really, really high level, guys. So if there's anyone here that knows a fair bit about it, obviously you understand why I'm keeping it high level. Now, it's really, really simple. Now, if you're going to compose a DSAR, a DSAR um, works on the basis that you're asking questions that you know they can't comply with, that you can know you, that if they can oh, evidence. Yep. Just quick, can you just remind um, some of the guys, because they might not have seen the last one we've done, DSAR, what does it stand for? Sorry, yeah, data subject access request. Data subject access request. Yes, it. Yeah, carry and, on. Um, and we are the data subject. So just very quickly on that, just to, before we get into this. So under the Data Protection Act 2018 and data and information, okay, it's our property. So if it's our property, our signature, our name is our data. And if you know an organization has got that and has been using that in some way, you can serve a DSAR upon them. And then it depends on how you're crafting your questions based on the matter at hand that catches them into this non-compliance situation and then allows you to start filing a claim. So in the DSAR itself, given what I've just said about, you know, debt, one company, the other company, right? There's only really two ways that that debt can be given. Can, how do I, I don't want to use the word assigned right now, but that debt can go from one company to the other and that be, um, and then have a legal right to that debt. Okay. And so, the first thing then, and this is why a lot of these templates out there ask for the contract between you and said enforcement agency. Now, what we're really looking for here, because it's a debt situation, is for that to be enforceable by them, there would either have to be proof of assignment of the debt or there would have to be a contract that expressing third party contract rights. OK, now I've, I've got a slide here. I could have really shown you, but I'll send you this information after the, the call, guys. But. Um, what we want to look for is third, Contracts Third Party Rights Act 1999, and it's section one to three. Now, third party contracts basically mean that if if Darren and I had a contract, well, let's keep it even simpler. If a debt collection agency and the council and I, and I'm meant to be liable for this debt, and there was a contract situation, then every single party for that debt has to be expressed within that contract which means the enforcement agency themselves would have to be written into the contract. Yeah. Okay. Now we're asking a question with the DSAR to, to, for that contract because we know it doesn't exist. So they're going to have to confirm that it doesn't exist or it's not relevant. So it's kind of like ticking off the box, the list that we know they can't comply with. So we're getting to the crux of the matter. Okay. So they cannot provide a third party contract or any contract because it doesn't exist. Thank you very much. So what are we really dealing with then? Well, it can only be assignment of the debt. Company one to company two, the debt's got to be assigned. Now, for that to happen, there has to be a trail to prove the assignment has occurred. Now, again, we obviously know there's been no assignment of the debt and therefore they don't have a claim. So it comes down to what questions are we asking in the DSAR to start exposing this information? OK, mm -hmm. so the first one then is obviously about, you know, the third party contract. The second one we're going to be asking is for your data and information contained within any deed of novation. Now, this, again, is around contracts. So if you haven't got the third party contract, then there has to be a novation of the contract to the other party. And for that, there has to be a certificate. There has to be a paper trail. So we're going to ask that question knowing they can't provide it because there wasn't a novation of the contract. Hmm. Getting into the assignment. I'm really gutted I can't show you this stuff, guys. No, this is you are, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, basically, so, what it is is just you're just um, legally, lawfully removing layers of their armour before they get to a point where they're so exposed and it just disappears pretty much, doesn't it? Exactly. And I've just... <laughs> it's not doing it, oh. is it? <laughs> I can't hear you. I think you've... Um... Oh, wow. So, really? so, oh, I've got you now. Yeah, sorry, you broke up. I didn't actually hear what you just said there, Darren. Sorry. No. Um, but yeah, yeah, basically, just um, it just peels away their armour. The more that you go through the DSARs, because you're going to um, have an idea of what responses you're going to receive from them, and it's going to be like a tick in the box. Then you go to the next one. And then once they start realising, ah, we got someone here who knows what they're doing, 
they're going to expect the inevitable nail in the coffin. And when that happens, that's pretty much game over. And they're just going to move on to someone else who is not informed, which is what we're trying to do now, inform the people of your rights to defend yourself in this heinous legalese way, which is pretty much what they're doing, isn't it? Exactly it. Yeah, exactly it. They want the low-hanging fruit. They want the ones they can intimidate, that they don't know what they're doing so they can take their cash. Because again, these enforcement agents, they're paid upon their ability to extract that cash from people that are willing to pay them it, right? Mm. So if you're showing that you know what you're doing or you're demonstrating that doesn't matter how many times I knock on your door, you're not answering it, then if I'm an enforcement agent, I'm not. I'm wasting my time, aren't I? Why would I keep coming back for the same results? It doesn't make any sense. So it's just understanding that and, and doing it. And they'll, they actually end up just going away, you know. Mm. So the, the final bit I want to just touch on is assignment. How do we prove or disprove assignment? So if a debt is assigned from one organization to another and, and you're meant to be liable for it, then they have to actually provide you with what's called a notice of assignment. Now, a notice of assignment is very well established. There's a lot of case law around it. Now, what we use is Section 196 of the Law of Property Act 1925. Okay, wow. so it's Section 196 of the Law of Property Act 1925. Now, the Law of Property Act is not about, you know, houses or anything like that. It's property. Now, what are we asking for? Our property, our data and information that they're holding. Ah. Right. And we want it. OK, so we're using that piece of legislation. Now, what that confirms is under that piece of legislation, sorry, is how the notice of assignment has to be served. And we've also got some case law, which I'll provide to you guys, which basically says I'm just simplifying all of this, that the only way that that can be served is if they can prove it's been served. And so it's got to be done as recorded delivery or special delivery. Otherwise, there's no way to prove that you were notified of any assignment. And all of the applicable case law essentially <clears throat> confirms the same thing in that you have to be sufficiently notified to be served. Otherwise, how can you now accept any type of liability? You didn't know anything. Right. So, again, if you're asking that question in a DSA with the applicable case law and, and the legislation, they can't comply with it. So if they if you know what you're doing with the debts and they can't comply with it, they're already confirming they don't have any right of claim against you. Right. Mm. And then the final one then is um, deeds of assignment. So if this has been assigned, there will be a trail. And then I don't want to get too deep with this one because this goes into titles. It could do, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to I want to keep it really, really high level. But the deed of assignment will basically evidence all of the, 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 the relevant parties to the debt. And the bottom line is this. That enforcement agency ain't one of them. OK, so if the debt's been assigned, they have to produce and prove there was a notice of assignment served upon you. And they have to provide a deed of assignment if you ask that question. Now, there's more um, legislation to support it. So I'm going to just go through this very quickly. It's the Law of Property Act again, Section 136 and Section 53. And then you want Section 44 of the Companies Act 2006. Now, just on that Companies Act and that section, if you notice every single piece of paperwork you get from these organisations, <clears throat> no one signs it. No one puts their name to it. And every single time they do that, they're breaching the Companies Act. And if it's severe enough, that's that's something you can actually bring a claim against them for. Oh, so, oh I've got one here, for example, and I'm looking at one here. Um, and it says, um, your sincerely operations manager, written, print written, almost like a signature, but it's not actually the name. No one, I believe, is being is called Mr. Operations Manager. It's just it's so bogus dude it's ridiculous and when you know this stuff i mean th there you go you've got a document from an organization mm. that yeah. is breaching the companies act 2006 right so who's liable the principal the ceo the one at the top so if you're going on the attack and you know this stuff it's so easy to start unpicking it all you know yeah. i'm i'm just going to this is um, an official document by the way and I'm not going to show the other side because of um, identity and stuff. But this is exactly what I'm talking about right there. Can you <laughs> it's understand? Just, it's laughable, though, isn't it? You it really, really it is really is laughable, dude. I mean, but like I say, if if um, I would say the general public um, are just not aware of this, that's how and why they've been getting away with this BS for so long. Because people just don't know. I mean, we've got, what are we, 570 or people 
right here, right now. And many more will watch this on the replay. And I really hope that the majority of everyone watching this video will learn something. And it does seem to be, once you boil away the pea, as I call it, it's just a real good um, understanding of you have the right to remain silent. Don't open that door. Don't en un enter into any contract with them. Don't even talk to them or whatever. Even if they're talking through your letterbox, whatever it is, don't say nothing. Now, I wouldn't want to guess how many times the average um, bailiff would turn up at your house if you do not comply. Will it be once a week, once a fortnight, for four or five or six times? I mean, I don't know if there's any term or declaration out there which would say that could be deemed as harassment if it's um, in a frequency of a period of time and a period of visits. So I would say eventually that is going to cease. I would hasten to guess anyway. Yeah, absolutely does. And if you know this stuff and you you know you get your head around it, you can pretty much bring it to an end at the time. If they come to you, um, if you get a letter, you can just bang in your DSAR and go on the attack straight away. Um, trust me, if you're doing that and, and you show you know what you're doing, they're not going to waste their time with you because yeah. it's, it's just not worth it. It's commercially not viable for them to keep doing that stuff, you know? Mm. So um, I'm really sorry, guys, I couldn't show you what I actually had prepared. It's a, a bit gutting there. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll produce a document and I'll just put all of the key points in it. So anyone that wants it, I'll just PDF it and you can take it. So you'll have all of the high-level bits with the legislation yeah. and, and whatnot to look into. And hopefully that, that helps out. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, I don't know if I remember to do it, um, but I'll set all this up um, over the weekend, I think. And I can't remember if I put the link to your website and YouTube channel under here, but when this is finished, I will. So you're more than welcome to contact Gavin through his website, etc. But what I touched on earlier about the, the government guidelines, as it were, and laying out um, all about bailiffs, can they come in? Yes, they can. No, you can't, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, if you remember rightly, when I glossed over that real quick, there was a section about mental health and stuff like that. But I want to share this. This was emailed to me recently. Okay, so I'm going to put this up on the screen now, and we're going to go over it real quick. Now, if you can see on here, about five years ago, I was very ill, suffering from a massive heart failure. <clears throat> Excuse me and was in and out of hospital. Because of this, I was unable to get out and pay my bills and got behind on my council tax. The local council in Bedford ordered bailiffs round. They made threats to take items, including a cheap mobile phone that was a lifeline. Luckily, my very kind local doctor slammed the council and told them that they were putting someone at extreme risk. The Bedford Council withdrew, withdraw, sorry, it's all come up on the bloody screen. Um, um, let me just close that down a bit so I can see it. There we go. Um, the Bedford Council withdraws and wrote off my bill. Now, that is indeed another um, thing that people probably don't realise that they could actually use. You could probably get a third party involved if you are under any of those... Um, ticks in boxes should we say which could make you exempt very very quickly so it's not just the case of really knowing the legal system and firing off all of these d stars etc etc there's so many ways that you can stop this but i do feel that the main reason that these agencies have got away with this for so long is because they have been using fear now if you just picture a hundred people which baiters turn up at out of those 100 people, how many of them are vulnerable? How many of them have got all sorts of issues going on and literally won't be able to defend themselves in an intellectual manner? They're the sort of people that fall prey to this. It's almost like um, a wolf going around there, and a wolf's always going to take the weakest animal, like a lion would. Okay, They're not going to go for the fittest, biggest guy at the front. They're going to go for the one who's falling behind at the back who's lagging behind, and they're the ones who are going to get taken out. And unfortunately, you can use that um, analogy regarding this, because they do go for the ill-informed, the vulnerable, the mentally ill. And unfortunately, some of these people actually lose their homes because they're paying all of this unnecessary debt to these people and then literally losing their homes, because that has happened on numerous occasions, mate, hasn't it? Unfortunately. 
Sorry, I was muted there. Uh, yeah, basically, you're, you're, you're right. Do you know what? It, for me, it's, it's simple now. Like we, we, I don't know. I'm just looking at the comments in the chat and you, you, you get a sense of the folks that are there. And I think we're all aware to some element. And um, my view is that we're in this shit show that we're in because of apathy and the fact that generationally we've just given away our power. <laughs> and, and, and the reality is we have all that power. And we yeah. just don't know it. And so it's really just a case of like taking ownership of that fact and going out there and doing a bit of reading and just understanding how this stuff really works. Yeah. And it's not that hard to do, you know, mm. and once you've got the framework of all these things, you just start doing. And it's really empowering when you do yeah. your first notice or you do your first thing or you can even compile a little reply to a text message that one of these idiots has sent you, whatever, and you see them yeah. back off. You I, know. Think, I think that's what the the common thread that we both share absolutely passionately too, and it's empowering people. I mean, I haven't even seen it yet, but I recorded a video today and I'll put it up at seven o'clock, so it's about an hour before uh, we come on air, as it were. And it was all about, and I, I titled the um, the video. In fact, I've been thinking of getting some T-shirts made, and it's a very simple thing: start saying no. Well, in this case, start saying nothing at all. <laughs> but, yeah. the thing, but the thing is, it's basically um, a few of my own personal life experiences put out in that video, trying to inspire and encourage people. If there's anything that they're faced with that they don't feel happy about, they don't feel comfortable about, or their intuition or their gut feeling or their instinct tells them this is wrong, you should have the minerals or have grow a pair, just say no. And I'll tell you, yeah. once you start doing that, it's like, wow, it's just opening floodgates because anyone or anything that comes in your way, as it were, and you start saying no, the amount of people that just go, all right, and you think, whoa, years ago, you see how I boiled it all down was one of the main reasons society is the way it is right now, too many people are saying yes. That's the whole problem. When we start to learn to say no, and really mean no, you watch that tide change. It will absolutely be incredible. And I can actually see it. I can see people literally waking up every single day now. And um, a lot of it is financial because we are, most of us are under huge financial pressure right now with everything going crazy and price, etc. And then you've got all of these nasty poison people waiting around the corners trying to get money from you for no real reason at all. And yes, the tide is turning. And like this is absolutely helping building that um, fortress, as it were, to empower people, to make them realize, actually, I can stop this. I don't have to be a victim. And I think it's awesome, bro. I really, really do that. People like us can just sit here and talk, put the facts out there, and then make people think, do you know what? I've got this. And that's really cool. It really, really is empowering, mate, isn't it? Seriously. Uh, yeah, completely agree. And it's, it's just, mm. a, and, and this is the thing. I mean, we generally don't step up and do something until we've run foul of the system personally. And I think that, again, it's just my own assumption, but I think a lot more people are becoming aware of the corruption and the tyranny that's playing out because it's now affecting us day to day. And we're, we are running foul of this system. And when you've spent a lifetime obeying the rules and doing things the right way and you're never breaking the laws, as it were, to then run foul of the system and experience that stacked against you, my experience is it's enough to get people off their ass and actually fighting. Um, yeah, yeah. I know a guy that, that for years just didn't get it, was always paying the council tax, blah, blah, blah. And it took a run-in with his council about, it was actually 2020, um, for him to experience that firsthand to realize yeah. like whoa that that's not meant to happen that way and mm. it's got to the he's never paid it since and he's been fighting everything ever since that was that was what needed to happen for him to like yeah. wake up and start doing something <clears throat> you know and i think that now we've got it it's obviously getting quite uh you know severe out there isn't it financially and everything else with everything Do you know back. what i think you've you've really nailed it there seriously i mean from what i was taking from that as you were talking there was um, the average um, hardworking, um, taxpaying person here in the UK has literally done nothing really wrong. They've always paid their bills on time. They've never been in debt. All of a sudden, good, honest, hardworking people are actually finding themselves at food banks. They're actually finding themselves 
defaulting on a council tax payment and it's starting to come to them. And only at that point when they're directly affected and confronted with all of this stuff, which hasn't happened to them before, only then are they going to start going, what can I do? And hopefully they do YouTube searches to find videos like this and they'll go, whoa, really? Yes, really. And that is what I mean. All of these sort of things now is literally waking up so many people to what's going on. Now, when I started my YouTube channel back in 2012, all I ever concentrated on was um, what I'm doing to prepare um, my faults and findings. So I'm going to pass on the mistakes that I've made so other people couldn't make them, all of that sort of thing. And way back then, I never would have thought about talking about why I actually prep. But now it's getting so much out there now. In fact, if you don't talk about, you know, why are you prepping, they're not going to be interested. I mean, if you want to go and watch thousands and thousands of videos of how to start a fire or how to purify water, it's already been done. But what they're not telling you is why they're practicing those skills in the first place. And this all comes around full circle to exactly what we're seeing now. And there's big changes coming. And like you said, more and more people are looking into this stuff. I mean, you've been running um, Sovereign Empowerment for a while now. I mean, you must have seen the uptake since 2020 from people going, dude, educate me. I've got this. It's going yeah. Crazy. It's, it's, I mean, I, you know, my journey started with me on my own doing what I was doing from 2020 into 2021 and, you know, getting in amongst it and failing and all that good stuff. Um, oh, thank you, John. I'll tell you what, before you go any further, this guy here, right, is the same as yourself. Good man, John. I mean, yeah, he, he, he tried to educate me and I, I, I knew bits and pieces of it from um, John Harris back in the day, free man on the land and all of that sort of stuff. Um, Albert Burgess about common law and the British Constitution group with Brian Gerrish. I was involved in that a long, long time ago. And then people are only just starting to find out about it now. And they're emailing me and he said, yeah, did you know, man, with all due respect, I was woke up about 2008. And then the thing is, people are waking up now or two years ago. So we, some of us who have been awake for a long period of time have really progressed past this and can see what's needed and have adjusted our preps accordingly. And this guy here, honestly, he really knows his stuff. And he's, um, it's an absolute pleasure to call him a good personal friend of mine as well. So, John, you didn't have to donate, dude. And speaking of donations, I'm checking quick. Um, thank you very much indeed for Sarah and Louise for the donations on PayPal. That's absolutely awesome. But, um, yeah, sorry, dude. <laughs> I'll cut you off there. But, yeah, you was talking about something. In the, no, no, no. It's all good. Oh, good, my man. I can't remember what was. Oh, it was 2020 and just the, the change. I mean, since I've been doing it and now helping more people, the level of corruption has gone up like to ridiculous levels. Like, you, you know, you used to be able to do things with a couple of notices or, you, you know, you just notice it with the courts and everything else. It's almost like they don't care anymore. And, and that tells blatantly. me blatantly like and that just tells me we're, we're close to the end of this stuff. You know? I really do think you're right, man, seriously, because... Power to the people and all that, you know? Yeah, and there's only so much the mainstream media can sort of um, shy away from this. I mean, a classic example is um, during 2020, um, there was a YouTube channel called Rutley, and basically what they was doing, they was doing live streams of every single um, protest, should we say, during 2020. And it was just insane to actually see we're talking thousands, tens of thousands of people. And you go into the mainstream and there wasn't even a sniff on it. So there's only so much that people just say, I, I don't like to use the term um, asleep because we were all asleep at one point, including myself. And it is a bit derogatory. So I do believe that people will wake up at the time um, they're needed to. And maybe some of them never will. But beside the point, you know, you're seeing big, big changes now. And when all these people... They go out to the shops in London and it, and all of a sudden they find themselves in like a, a 30,000 strong protest. Whoa, and they go back home and they put the telly on. There's not one mention of it. Surely they're going to be going, why wasn't that on the news? And people start waking up and questioning things. So, so many people are waking up right now. And like I say, it's absolutely awesome to actually stick it to these vagabonds and bandits, as I like to refer to them as, as literally just robbing money off of people. 
And like we discussed in the the um, the council tax thing, you know, the fake court and everything else, and you hire it for the day. <laughs> it's just, man, if only pay, if everyone knew about what was going on. Honestly, this whole house of cards will just fall in a day. It really, really would. It's and inevitable, I think. It's it is. There's no it's way happen. it can reverse, yeah. is it? Really? You've got. I mean, you've got. I mean, let's just be honest. You've got an illegitimate monarchy. Um, you got a, a, the, the alleged new king coming in, like wanting to. Uh, I like the word used allegedly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah. Alleged new king coming in, wanting to change the uh, the coronation oath, so it kind of uh, dovetails into the WF agenda. You've oh, no. got an illegitimate government. I mean, it, it, like if you really dig into this guy, guys, this isn't like made. It's provably <clears throat> true. It's absolutely provably true. That's mm. the situation we're in, and so really, it's just peaceful non-compliance the moment that we stop giving power to this illegitimate matrix system that doesn't mm. serve our interests at all and we know it serves the globalists and, and everybody else the moment we stop that it's over mm. and that's really all it is isn't it yeah so exactly need like I say, more people to be aware sorry 100 on point no 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 it's actually cool and like i say if you're watching this video now and if you haven't already seen it Look at the video I put up just before this. And it's a real simple video of me just talking, outlining some experiences I've personally had. And the more I look at it and more I remember, I've been non-compliant since I was at school, pretty much. And it just really, it makes me so sad when I just see, especially what was happening on in 2020. Like I said in that video earlier before this, I remember on numerous occasions walking around in a Tesco superstore, the, the great big ones, not just the average ones, the really huge big Tescos. And I would hazard a guess and say there was at least two to 300, maybe even more people in there. But on numerous occasions, everywhere I looked, I was the only one in there without that. So you can not comply. Like I said in that video, start saying no. And I'll tell you what, as soon as you start doing that, the world will turn. Isn't that right, bruv? It will yeah, absolutely. Will turn. Yeah. That word no, such empowering. It's so empowering when you do it and you, you stand there in your power. Mm. Um, that's all you need to do. It's over. Yeah. I mean, do you remember, it wasn't that long ago, it was before 2020, um, when you go to um, the post office and you got a parcel and you wanted to send it, and they would say, um, um, what's in a parcel or if they're plight would you mind telling me what's in a parcel and i never ever told them and once i actually walked out and went to another post office and it was fine and a few times you know i said to him why do you want to know what's in there it's private and he said oh we've been told by our supervisor or our manager to ask i say are they there yes can you go and get them please and they'll come over and say look this is private what's in here but what i can tell you there's nothing in this parcel which is on your banned items list. And then nine times out of 10, they go, yep, yeah, fine, okay. And they notice there's a cube behind you. Now, this is a real important point, guys. Don't worry about what other people think. There might be six people behind you in the post office, and you might feel the energies of them going, come on, come on, I've got to pick the kids up from school or whatever it is. Forget about them. You're just focused in on that guy or girl at the counter asking you what's in your parcel which is none of your business honestly man i could go on for hours saying about just non-compliance and this is another thing and we're talking about um debt collection and bailiffs and that sort of thing as soon as you start entering into a contract whether it's verbally over the phone via um, the mail or via an email you are in that contract and if you don't know what you're doing it could be very difficult to come out and you probably will end up paying something so like gavin said the best thing is don't even open the door. Don't even talk to them. That's pretty. We could have done the whole video in two minutes and then turn it off. Can we yeah, basically? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It because it is. I mean, like Gavin said. I mean, Gavin spent a hell of a lot of his own personal time. And this is another thing that people say to me. Not everyone, but some people say, "I haven't got time to do that." But no, they've got you know they've got time to spend like nine or ten hours at the pub every single week. They've got time to sit in the bookies on a Saturday afternoon. They've, you know, they're watching TV, buddy, eight hours every evening or whatever it is. Gavin and myself spend a lot of our own time researching and looking into things. Now, this is one of the reasons why we know what we know, because we don't think it's that important to sit there just watching, vegetating that rectangle black square in the corner of your room, you know, wasting your life 
read, learn, educate yourself, help people. You know, and because... I think, I... Yeah, sorry, no, Darren, no, it's a slight it. delay. I didn't mean to do that. Um, I think that just carrying on with that thought, for me, that's where it comes back to you, you've got to have that personal experience that negative experience before you get you're compelled to do something and it happened to me it happened probably to you and a lot of other people but at that point it becomes an obsession it can't not become an obsession because once you start to peel back the the layers you know, peel the, the curtains back as it were you see it for what it is mm. you you know there's loads of mind-blowing moments and i know people in the chat you know, re, you know um, resonate with what i'm saying but it becomes an obsession and then you always exactly. find the time and you stop watching the telly. I mean, I, I don't literally I used to be someone that would consume films, you know, Netflix, all that good stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't watch any of it now. I don't don't turn the TV on. All I do of an evening now is any spare time. I'm obviously got the family, but I'll be reading books on the law or any subject matter that's going to yeah. give me more knowledge that I can action that makes me powerful. Yeah. And that's the key thing, because I know I've got the power now. I don't I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. And that's the journey that we're on. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The commitment that I'm going to own my power and I'm going to peacefully non-comply. You win. It's, you lose. it's a beautiful thing, brother. It really, really, really is, isn't it? Because, you know, you can walk around. Like I said earlier, and it's very, very true. You know, I don't like to use the term asleep and awake, but it's the probably the easiest, most acceptable way to describe it. Yeah. And, you know, before 2008, I was that guy, you know, going to the pub um, on a Saturday afternoon doing football bets and stuff like that over the radio. I was that guy going to nightclubs. I was that guy getting kebabs at three in the morning, going to the curry house, blah, blah, blah. I was the guy buying, you know, 80 pound Lacoste t shirts in the 90s. I was that dude. I used to go and watch football matches and things like this. And, and until I woke up in 2008, I was just a regular Joe. 2008, when everything changed for me, it was like turning on a switch. And like Gavin said, you're just peeling back the layers. You just keep going. And do you know what? This is a true story. Um, probably about six months ago now, something like that, I genuinely, seriously tried to go back to being asleep. No, seriously, I did. I was thinking, there's just so much going on. I just want it to stop. I just want to go back to normal. And do you know how long I lasted? Four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no BS. And I'll, I'll guarantee any of you guys who um, want to use the term awake, really try to go, do you know what? Forget all of this. I'm going to go back to watching the telly, paying whatever, whatever. <laughs> Four seconds, mate. You've it's got not no possible, time. is it? You can't, you like... Can't. I I had done the same thing. I did try because I, I I had a, a a business before 2020 and stuff. But like you, you can't get back into that mindset. It's impossible. Once once you've seen it, you can't ever go back from it. And then yeah. unfortunately, you know, you, you're going to start going against the system and trying yeah. things out because it's the natural way to go. You can't have one mm. foot in and one foot out. Do you know what I mean? Well, exactly. So, because um, the system's all around us, and if you don't spend any time at least looking into it you know at some point that system is going to be like an octopus it's just going to put tentacles all over you and you're not going to know how to get out of it so it's all a part right. of the journey isn't it i mean you're learning about so many different things it's it's vast and it's huge and the old term you know um, jack of all trades master of none i mean no one and i don't care who you are watching right no one is going to know it all no, no. one and everyone makes mistakes. And the best way to learn is by mistakes. So yeah, you and must have made time on your journey you're on now to get to it. Oh, yeah? Make them all the time. And one of mm -hmm. the bigger things that I've, and it's one of those cliches, you get a lot of those kind of lifestyle gurus and stuff say this, but you've got to surround yourself with people. I mean, this is the way I do it, especially yeah. for what I'm doing now. I surround myself with people that are better than me, that know more than me. And that way I'm always elevating myself, you know, because I've always got someone I can turn to that can give me an answer to whatever situation. And I've, I've, I've really, I've really, I knew that before 2020, but it's not really, it's been since 2020 that I've actively chosen to do that. Because as you know, as you wake up, you tend to lose friends and all of that good stuff. And yeah, now it's really about, true. you're on that journey. You're on that journey of empowerment. How best do I empower myself? And that is with knowledge. And so you've got to get the right sort of sources for that knowledge yeah you know? exactly i mean the old um the average i guess when you like um go back in time as it were and you think um the average expectancy was 
you, know, you go to school, you go to college, you go to university, um, you get a good job, you get married, you have kids, you've got a freaking great mortgage, which is Mort Gage, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Death grip, okay? Death grip, yeah. Why would question. you wear a tie? A symbol of a noose, never wear a tie. That's a whole other video. But the thing is, that was the, the age-old consensus of what is expected of you as a citizen, especially in the UK. But the way I see things now, like I said, since 2008, everything is fluid and you're constantly moving, okay? Like Gavin said, once that um, switch is flicked and you're awake and you're starting talking about certain things and your group of friends at that time are saying, what are you talking about? You know, you're one of them tinfoil hat, blah, 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 you know, 9-11 and whatever it is, all of a sudden you're going to find yourself sticking to your truth and going wherever your intuition is going to take you. And over time, you know, people come and people go. Even if you've known that group of friends since you was six-year-old, uh, first school or whatever it is, it doesn't matter because you're on that journey. People come and go. So try not to think of it as, oh, no, no, you know, we disagree. We've been friends, blah, blah, blah. If it's not serving you, just move on. Move and on. just try and, like Bruce Lee said, be water. Just keep moving. Stuff changes all the time. You know, people lose their jobs. Don't mope about it. Just do something, move on, and just always keep moving forward. And like I say, the more people that you can help, inspire, encourage, the more good things are going to come back to you as well. Like I tell my son, if you do bad things, bad things are going to come back. You do good things, good things will come back. It's that easy. So to actually be in a position where um, Gavin and myself are, where we're making a living helping people and inspiring people and doing what we truly want to do. This is our true paths, and we're on there. It's fantastic. But the amount of people that are stuck in a rut, you know, they're, they're in a council house, they work for a factory, they're on minimum wage, zero-hour contracts, they're moaning that you've got no money. Listen, I was that guy before. I was on crappy wages. If you really want to believe in yourself, and you, whatever it takes, doesn't matter if you lose loads of friends or people in the family fall out, who cares? It's your life, you live it, and you move forward. And eventually you will get to where you need to get to. And going down this road of this corrupt, and that is the key word, the corrupt legal system in the UK and the world as well. I mean, it's other countries. It's not just the UK that's going for this fines and debts and blah, blah, blah. The more you understand how it works, and like you said, peaceful non-compliance, just remain silent, just don't enter the contract, you're going to win more than you realise, unless you want to play the game and um, allow yourself to get um, robbed because that's what they're doing, mate. They're robbing people, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. And I think, I mean, I think we're bringing this to an end here, I guess. Now. But I, th I think the main thing I'd leave it is with that uh, if you want to stand in your power, it really starts with a simple choice to do so. You, and you're either doing it or you're not, you know. Yeah. So if you want to do it and you want to go on the journey, you make the choice and you go on the journey. And, and to your point, you just keep failing, failing forward, failing forward all the time. Learn, learn, learn. Keep moving forward and you will win. Just jump in the pool. Don't don't spend all the time putting your feet in there. If you want to know what it's like to swim, jump in the pool. Yeah, you can swim to the side and hold on. But the more time you spend it there and the more you learn, you can swim for ages. You haven't got to stand there going, oh, I want to put my toe in there. Just get in there and figure it out as you go and uh, learn by mistakes. And yet the world will turn. So what we're going to do now, if you've got time, Gavin, I don't know what your plans are. Um, we can take some Q and A. So, if any of you guys watching right now in the chat, full capital letters, anything that you need to ask Gavin, I'm guessing, or probably myself, whack it in full capital letters right now as soon as you can, and we'll do our best to answer some of these questions. So, we're, we've got a bit of a delay. So, once all of that's um, going on now, I'm just going to quickly um, share this because we already looked at the government. Now we're going to look at another entity, which is Citizens Advice, stopping bailiffs at your door. So we're just going to go past all of that BS up there. And if I looked on here, look at this. Before you speak to a bailiff, um, if you are disabled or seriously ill, have mental health 
problems. Now, whether that needs to be proved um, clinically by a physician, I don't really know. Um, there's a lot of people with mental health problems that haven't been diagnosed, um, but that could be um, a possible lever in your arsenal. Um, if you've got children there or you're pregnant, um, if you're under 18 or you're over 65, now this is important because I'm getting a lot of um, followers who I'd love to call my elders over the age of 65. And if any of you guys watching now over the age of 65, you really don't have to anything to worry about. Um, you don't speak or read English well. Well, what about all those um, hundreds of thousands of um, soon-to-be UK citizens? How are they going to fare? Mind you, I think they get it all paid for them, don't they? But that's another story. Or look at this. Or you were in a stressful situation like a recent um, bereavement or unemployment. It just goes on. You know, get proof of who they are, etc. cetera. Um, check if the bailiff can force entry. Look at this, unpaid magistrate court fines, for example, if you're given a fine or not paying a TV license. Oh, my goodness. Who pays TV licenses? That's the story for another day. So hopefully we've um, we got some questions now. So we're just going to scroll up and try and find the first one because it's always fair to start with um, who come first. Um, I think there was one about – there's a few asking about that case um, – that happened oh, the other course, Thursday. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think I've got to go in about 10 minutes, guys. So I thought I'd probably just clarify what's going on with that. And and I want to be clear on this, guys, because I, I, yeah. I got into a bit of bit of um trouble, but it was stupid. But anyway, I was at that case because um I know the defendant George and uh, a good friend of mine, Randolph, who was his Mackenzie friend. That's the reason I was there. So I just want to put this out for record. I've got nothing to do with the peacekeepers. Don't know the peacekeepers. It wasn't that. That wasn't why I was there. Right. Court case itself, though, um, they lost. They lost. Now, why did they lose? Because it's all bloody corrupt. The judge refused to hear the argument. Um, there was so much BS going on on that day. And I know they're dealing with it. Um, George is not out of the fight and he's going to carry on. So now... People might be listening to that now and going, oh, my God, you know, despondent, it's over, there's nothing that can be done. What we've got to understand is that the system is corrupt, the system is tyrannical, and these lower admin courts are completely unlawful, don't care what the black belt barrister says, is of the system, is loyal to the yeah, bar no and the offense, bankers, no. right? Whoever no. you're following that stuff, whatever. So mm -hmm. the, the main thing is, is that they're completely unlawful. And what happened mm -hmm. in that court, it's not meant to happen in any court, but it did. But it gives them remedy. It gives them recourse to do something about it. And that's what they're going to do. So the main thing with all of this stuff, if you are truly standing for freedom and truly standing up against the tyranny that this system presents, then it's got to be a willingness if you're going to go this direction, because there are other ways to do it. I'm not saying this is the only way, but if you're going this way and you're using the very system um against itself if you like you've got to be willing to go all the way to the supreme court if that's where you have to go because it's a matter of principle and yeah. your purpose in standing is ensuring that your argument you can be heard and so mm. if you're looking at you know the obligation argument and the bill of rights and everything else then really you're never going to get that heard unless you're in a high court and i think the question we need to be asking is are they going to recognize that and hear that argument in the higher courts? Because if they don't, and the same sort of stuff happens there, then I think the answer to the question of whether we have justice in this system, I think that's completely gone. Right. Wow. And then we definitely need to take a different route. If they won't yeah. hear those statutes, then there's, there's a big, big problem. Mm. Now, yeah, I want to leave you with this one last point. Mm. Um, we have a constitution and there's a lot of argument about, you know, whether it is or isn't and everything else. But my view is, and I, I just implore everybody to start looking into this and ignore any of the information that says it's not, it's no longer legitimate, but look into the Magna Carta 1215. And that's all I'm going to say. Just use your own discernment, start looking into the history of it. Um, there's a great book. And I, as I'm saying, I've forgotten who bloody authored it, but it's called um, Democracy Defined. If you want to contact me, I can share a PDF copy of that book. It will blow your mind. And what it does is explain how the system is meant to work with juries. We have the power. We're meant to be able to um, basically, uh, um, I've forgotten the word, it's gone out of my head, but withdraw legislation. Okay, we're meant to be doing all of this stuff, not parliament. We, the people. So have a look at that. 
Um, I think someone just said about update on the council tax case, but I've just given that update. So basically, yeah. guys, hopefully um, I've helped with a bit of information. I apologize that I couldn't get that presentation working, but I'll, I'll put it in a PDF. I'll send it to anybody that wants it. And um, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem at all, dude. Seriously, um, like I said, I, I can't really check anything right now. But when this live stream is finished, I will be putting the links to Gavin's website and indeed his YouTube channel because there's an awesome video to watch about that council tax thing. It's awesome. It seriously, seriously is. If Any it wasn't facts? for that, I wouldn't have found you, man. You know. Yeah, and I appreciate that. The time was brilliant. I've just had a little light bulb moment. Um, I actually have that rather than the presentation, I actually have a video on the channel. That, that, that basically breaks down debt claims, how this stuff works. And that's pretty much what I was going through. So I can send you the stuff on the warrant of control, but the stuff about debt claims, there's a video on the channel that breaks it all down. Oh, magnificent. So yeah, I'll, once this live stream is finished, I will jump straight on that and I'll put the links. So if you're watching, guys, just give it five minutes or so and the links will appear. If I don't, just refresh your screen if you're on a web browser, etc. And uh, it should all be good in the hood. So... There you go, guys. What do you think? I think Gavin's cool. Yeah, of course he is. <laughs> so we'll definitely be having you on again, mate, because um, you know, lots of the guys and girls, you know, they do um, email me um, on my website and that quite a lot about like, when's Gavin coming back and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we'll keep in contact, mate, and then we'll I'll just fire some emails over to you to see what the people um, want to hear about, et cetera. And um the thing is, another thing as well, which um, I've got some researchers looking into 15-minute cities and things like that, which is another subject. Um, and lots of them, they go on the government websites and indeed all of the other law websites as well. And the amount of changes that just pop up, which people don't check, but these people check every day, legislations, etc., statutes and acts. It gets updated hourly, daily, whatever yes, it is. That's right, yeah. So, but by, by like a privy that, council, it pop right up, couldn't it? And just literally be a help or a hindrance to what we're trying to achieve here. Completely agree. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't think we've got, a, I know, going to uh, go now, but um, with the 15 minute cities, the digital IDs, all that bad stuff that we uh, we think is coming, I don't see it happening once the system's collapsed. No. Um, no. I think once it's, it's who controls the new financial system is the question. And I don't see that the bad guys, for want of a better word, have yeah. that. And you can well, confirm that speaking. by the BRICS stations now. Oh, the BRICS, yeah, yeah, okay, it's bloody that, hell, That's yeah. going to kill CBDCs, guys. So that will mm. kill fear because the West needs to trade with the rest of the world and the rest of the world is now going to a gold standard with the BRICS yeah. alliance and the, um, the dollar is going to lose um, reserve status and it's going to happen pretty bloody soon. So once yeah. that's all played out, CBDCs cannot happen. It won't work. You heard about the, um, the Bradbury pound? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually reading a bit on that today, actually. Do you know what? Yeah, because I've got Richard, um, Richard Phobes, um, on live um, tomorrow night and watching some of his stuff today when I was just looking through things. And I'll see him and mention it. And I'm thinking, whoa, that really, really needs to get out there. Back in 1914 when things changed. Yes, just imagine if it actually happened, our own sort of greenbacks, as it were. There's no way. I mean, it's going to be debt free issued currency. It's going to happen. The whole Not thing necessarily back. the Bradbury pound, but it is, it's going to happen. We have to yeah. we have to become asset backs. There's it's no scary these times, but they're it. also exciting as well. It's yeah. just we're it's living got, in history right now. We've got to it's ride the real. wave. Do you know what I mean? We just got to ride the wave through. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What it's about. But anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. I've got to go and deal with the kids. <laughs> No worries. Okay, then, guys. Um, yeah, please send me um, an email if you want to discuss anything mentioned in tonight's show. The email address is below this video. Thank you ever so much for everyone who's donated as well. That really, really helps. Thanks to everyone taking part in the chat. You guys are awesome. The moderators as well. And if you're watching on the replay, thanks for spending your time with us. And yes, the moderators are awesome. Without them, this stuff just doesn't happen. So, guys, thank you very much indeed for watching. Stay funky.